All right, so this is our last chapter of the Gen Chem section. Um, so chapter 8 here talks about acids and bases. So acids and bases are important classifications of molecules. They have their, um, they have particular properties. And particularly moving forward as we move into the organic and biochem sections, we're going to talk a lot about uh, acids and bases and reactions with acids and bases. So this is going to be almost like a bridge into that organic um, stuff, even though as you'll see once we hit the organic chemistry section, it's going to be a lot different. Um, okay, so acids and bases. An acid can have, there's a few different ways to define an acid. Um, on this slide here, it talks about the Arrhenius definition that basically says an acid contains a hydrogen atom and a base contains an OH, right? Remember, this is your a polyatomic ion that we talked about before. So this definition here isn't exactly correct. Um, it's right a lot of the time. Um, which is why I still like to talk about it. So this was like an early definition given, you know, hundreds of years ago. Um, and it's mainly right, but we're going to use kind of a different definition, uh, which we're going to uh, talk about in just a second. So while this Arrhenius definition works, um, it's limited. And one of the main reasons is it talks about having like an H plus free in solution. Um, an H plus does not exist free in water because what happens is whenever you have a free H plus around, um, as shown down here, um, H plus reacts with H2O to form what's known as a hydronium ion. So anytime you think of an H plus, right, so, and we're going to talk about acids and bases and a lot of it's going to have to deal, deal with um, these H pluses, these hydrogen ions. They don't exist free in solution. They immediately react with the water that's around to form H3O+, which is called the hydronium ion. So because of this and some other reasons, um, the definitions for acids and bases that we're actually going to use is going to be this Bronsted-Lowry definition. And the Bronsted-Lowry definition is pretty simple in terms of um, the understanding of it. Um, an acid is what we refer to as a proton donor or an H plus donor, and a base is going to be a proton or an H plus acceptor. Um, and if you're wondering why proton and H plus are kind of used interchangeably here, um, if you think about hydrogen, let me write up here on the top of the screen. If you were to look at hydrogen um, and you were to say how many uh, protons, so for hydrogen, let's write the whole thing out, hydrogen. If we were to say how many protons, neutrons, and electrons it had. All right, so if you look at the periodic table, hydrogen is number one. So it has one proton. Um, the weight of hydrogen, if you look at the periodic table, is 1.008, which means that almost all the hydrogens, like greater than 90% of the hydrogens, actually greater than like 99% of the hydrogens, have no neutrons. And their overall mass is going to be one. Occasionally, you're going to find a hydrogen that has uh, a neutron, but not very often. And because that, because remember, any time we talk about a neutral atom, right, or it's going to have an equal number of protons and electrons. So one, zero, and one. Now, if you were to look at H plus, right, so this up there is just for regular hydrogen. Now, if we were to look at H plus and we were to look at the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons, Remember, when something forms an ion, you don't change the number of protons at all, so it stays at one. You don't change the number of electrons at all. What you do is you change the number of electrons. Well, in order for hydrogen to have a plus charge, that means it has to have more protons than electrons. So something that has a positive charge has lost electrons. So H plus is that. One proton, no neutrons, no electrons. That is why proton and H plus are synonymous here. Okay, so that being said, if you look at uh, a reaction here, so if we look at this reaction, HCl plus H2O goes to H3O plus and Cl minus, what you can see is that H2O becomes H3O plus, and what happens is, is it gained an extra proton, it gained an H plus. HCl donated the H plus, so that way over here it becomes Cl minus because now it lost that H plus. 
So if we were to look at the definition, say which one was a proton donor, what donated the proton? Well, that was HCl. It had the proton there, and then it donated it, and now it lost it. So HCl is going to be your acid, and water is going to be your base because it's your proton acceptor. Here it is, and then it accepts that proton, and it becomes H3O+. Right? So this is going to be our definition of acids and bases. Acids are proton donors. Bases are proton acceptors. All right. So in order for something to be a proton donor or an acid, it has to have a hydrogen atom. So common acids that you're going to see are things like HCl, HBr, HNO3, which is nitric acid, H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid. This one, actually, both of those hydrogens can be donated. Um, acetic acid down here, this is a molecule we'll actually talk about in Chapter 13 quite a bit. Um, this is the acidic proton. So acetic acid is an acid, as you can tell by the name. This is the proton that's donated. The, anytime you have a hydrogen that's attached to a carbon, those are not going to be um, donated. Right, but this one that's over here attached to the O is. So that's going to be your acid. So again, acids have to contain a hydrogen, and these are going to be the hydrogens that are donated to the base. All right, so what's a base? Well, a base is going to be a proton acceptor. So because of that, it has to be able to form a bond to make a proton. If you think about it, a covalent bond is a sharing of two electrons. H plus, a proton, um, in order for it to form a bond, it doesn't bring any electrons with it. So if you remember, anytime you have a covalent bond between uh, two elements, right, there is a bond that goes between them. So for instance, if you had H bound to H, that line there that connects them is two electrons. Well, if H plus is coming in to interact with something, H plus doesn't have any electrons with it. So in order for H plus to be able to form a bond with something, there has to be a lone pair, two free electrons available for H plus to come in and form a bond to. All right. So a Bronsted-Lowry base has to have a lone pair of electrons. All right. And that lone pair of electrons is going to be used to form the new bond. So in this case here where you have NH3 plus H2O, we're going to form NH4 plus and OH minus. So in this case, water is going to donate a proton. That proton is going to come over here and form a bond. Whenever something forms a bond with H plus, you add the bond, and you also have to remember to give it that extra plus charge. So this goes from neutral to plus one. When H2O donates the proton, it's going from neutral to negative one over here. Okay, so acids are proton donors, bases are proton acceptors, acids have a hydrogen that can be a proton, bases have a lone pair of electrons that can form a bond with that proton. All right, so here are some common bases. Um, notice that on the examples on the left here, we're looking at things that have a lone pair, like water, oxygens have a lone pair, nitrogen always has a lone pair, if you remember back in chapter 3, I said there was a table that was really important that talked about how many bonds and lone pairs uh, particular elements have. So carbon always formed four bonds with no lone pairs. Nitrogen always formed three bonds with a lone pair. Oxygen always formed two bonds and had two lone pairs. So by knowing this information, we know that nitrogens are always going to have three bonds and a lone pair. Anything containing nitrogen is going to be a base. All right. Um, on the right over here, all of these guys are going to be bases. They have the OH. So they have that polyatomic ion, that OH minus ion, which is important um, to allow them to be a base. And the reason that it's a base, the O in the OH minus has lone pairs of electrons. Okay? So going forward and kind of looking at these reactions, here's the reactions in a very kind of generic um, way. It says an acid, which is A. So this isn't an element on the periodic table. A is just being used to describe acid, and B is used to describe base. So A is the acid, and then the acid has the proton attached to it. 
And here's our base with a lone pair of electrons. The acid loses the proton, and it forms what we refer to as the conjugate base. So conjugate base means if we were to go from right to left, so if we were to look at these guys and move this way with the reaction, notice how we have the bidirectional reaction arrow there, that this A minus here could act as a base and accept a proton to go over to H plus. So things on the right of the double reaction arrow like this are going to be conjugate base or conjugate acid. So acid forms a conjugate base. The base is going to gain a proton and it's going to form a conjugate acid. All right, so acid to conjugate base, base to conjugate acid. The conjugate is always going to be on the right side. And then the acid and base are always going to be on the left side. All right, so now this is basically that exact same slide as before, except this time actually looking at real chemicals. So for instance, hydrobromic acid, HBr, plus water forms bromide ion, Br minus, plus that hydronium ion, or H3O plus. So looking at this equation, if it wasn't labeled at all, I would expect you to be able to identify the acid, the base, the conjugate base, and the conjugate acid. Um, how would you know that? Well, you know on the left, you have to pick between an acid and a base. Which one has an H? Well, they both do. So you can't just look for an H. You have to look to see which one donated a proton. Well, one from HBr, and here's that Br again, but now it's without the H. So that means that this was a proton donor. A proton donor is going to be the acid. The acid forms a conjugate base. That means that H2O must have been the proton acceptor, and we can see it went from H2O over to H3O plus, or that hydronium ion. Um, one thing I want to point out down here, the net charge must be the same on both sides of the equation. So overall, your charge has to add up. So in other words, HBr has zero charge because it's not written. Water has no charge because it's not written. Bromine, or bromide ion, um, the bromide ion here has a negative one charge, right? That's what that minus means. And the H3O plus has a plus one charge. So on the left, we have zero plus zero equals zero. On the right, we have negative one plus positive one equals zero. So zero on the left and zero on the right. So one thing you want to always make sure is that your charges are the same on both sides of the equation. We can't just lose electrons into thin air. So that's why it always has to add up. All right, so keep in mind, you're going to see problems that say, um, what is the conjugate acid of something? Or what's the conjugate base of something? Remember that whenever something gains a proton, it's gaining not only the H, but it's also gaining a plus one charge. When something loses a proton, it's not only losing the H, but it's losing that charge, so basically it's going to gain a negative charge, right? So um, yeah, I say gaining a negative charge, right? You could also say it's losing the positive charge. It's the same thing. So HBr, for instance, goes from zero. If it loses a plus, it's going to become negative one, right? So the other way you could think of this, if you look at HBr, it says lose H plus. That means like you have bromine plus and H plus. It's kind of just hanging out over there. Right now you would almost have a balanced equation where you have HBr there and you have H and Br over here and you have a negative and a positive which add up to zero which is what you had over there. All right, works the same way. Um, if you were to do that for the top one where it says add H plus, remember that would be like adding, you would have H plus gets added to H2O to form H3O plus. So not only do you add the H but you also add the charge. Okay, so one thing you might have noticed as we've been going through this is that we've talked quite a bit about water. Water's been in a bunch of our chemical reactions. Um, in one of our chemical reactions, water acted as a base, and in a different reaction, water acted as an acid. So there are times where you can't just look at a molecule and say, this is an acid or this is a base. You actually have to look at the chemical reaction it's involved in to be able to identify it as an acid or a base. So compounds that contain both a hydrogen atom and a lone pair of electrons, they can be either an acid or base, and they're called amphoteric compounds. Kind of like an amphibian can live on land or on water. 
an amphoteric compound can be either an acid or a base. So water is an example of that. It can be an acid or it can be a base. Okay, so let's do a couple, um, couple problems here. So what is the conjugate acid of NO3 minus? So NO3 minus, I'll write it up here. So it's asking what the conjugate acid is going to be. So we want to know what the conjugate acid is going to be. Well, we know that in order to, for something to form a conjugate acid, that means that NO3 minus must be a base, right? Because a base is what we're going to, is what you start with. And a base leads to the formation of the conjugate acid, right? What does a base do? Well, a base is a proton acceptor. So we're going to gain an H+, plus because that's what bases do. So NO3 minus plus an H+. Plus. So we're going to write the H, and then we're going to write the NO3. And then we have to look at the charge, right? It went from negative 1. It gained a charge, so now it's up to 0. So HNO3 would be the final answer for that. That would be the conjugate acid of NO3 minus. All right? So nitrate is NO3 minus plus the proton gives us HNO3, which is nitric acid. All right, so let's do it again for HCO3 minus. So this one, it says, what's the conjugate base? So if we have HCO3 minus, that's bicarbonate, and we want to form the conjugate base. Well, remember, if that's a conjugate base, that means that this bicarbonate ion must be acting as an acid, right? Conjugate on one side, you're going to have the opposite name on the other side. So if this is a conjugate base, that means this has to be an acid to form the conjugate base. Well, we know acids are proton donors. So that means it's going to lose an H+. Plus. So if you were to look at that HCO3- minus, and you were to take away an H+, plus, so first we're going to take away the H, so that's going to give us CO3, and it was already negative 1. You take away another positive charge, that's going to lead us at negative 2. So the conjugate base for bicarbonate, HCO3 minus, would be carbonate, which is CO3, negative 2, or 2 minus. All right, then the bottom part here, identify the acid and the base and the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. Um, for this one, uh, we look at CH3COOH. And we see that that's going to come over here to CH3COO minus. So in order to go from here to there, what happened? Well, you lost an H plus, right? The H plus went away. So where did the H plus go? NH3 went over to NH4 plus. This one gained the H plus. So Protons are, sorry, let me say that again. Acids are going to be proton donors. So which one donated the proton? It was the CH3COOH. This is going to be our acid. And we know that the acid on the other side forms the conjugate base. And then we know that base is going to be the proton acceptor, NH3 gain the protons, so that means on the other side here we have the conjugate acid, that's going to be the NH4. So that's how you would label the various um, pieces in that chemical equation. Again, acids are proton donors, bases are proton acceptors.